Rachin Gappa, as someone who's tracked you know, the space mission for years, you've written a book on it. This must be a special moment for lots of people like you also. Yes, particularly because I was there in Chandrayaan 2 at the mission control and watched it uh, crash ignominiously. I think uh, the lesson, uh, Rajdeep, and uh, you know, I spoke to Dr. Somnath just two days ago. He sounded absolutely confident. Why was that? Because he was able to, what he talked about, all the issues that they faced with Chandrayaan 2, he built the redundancies for it, he made the spacecraft record, he ensured all the exigencies were taken care of, and he was supremely confident. When I you say he, you mean the team? The team, yes. The ISRO team did that. And you know, what, what that symbolizes, I think, is the true ISRO spirit in many senses. Uh, he talked of being made in India, but I think what really symbolizes this is your ability to come back from failure and make success of it. And I just want to take a half a minute, you know, I, uh, because Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who started the satellite launch vehicle journey, his first mission was a failure. SLV-3 went into the Bay of Bengal, and he was to resign. And, you know, he, uh, Satish Dhawan was chairman. He tore up the resignation and said, get down to work. And you know what Kalam told me after that? He said, failure is the stepping stone to success. That has been his rose motto, that, that they are willing to work hard, put in all the, the hours. I mean, they must have had sleepless nights. He doesn't talk of it. He's done more than 40 systems before they then reviewed it, got the Indian Institute of Science in it. They did multiple tests. What you're seeing is the success of that effort of coming back from the brink pushing it and doing it. I think that's the inspiration for me. Quite remarkable. Uh, Dr. Madhavan Nair, that's a good point on which to get you. I hope the line is clear now. The fact that Chandrayaan 2 didn't fully succeed, do you believe that gave the scientists extra motivation to make sure we got it right this time? That somewhere, and we heard it just now from Dr. Somnath, who much like you would say that, you know, it's Team Isro, which today is the real hero, not any individual. But just what uh, Raj Chengappa said, that sometimes adversity brings out the best, including in our scientists. Dr. Nair? Uh, yes, certainly I think uh, what uh, Somnath and his team has demonstrated is the resilience of uh, the strong organization like uh, ISRO. Uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Chekhov has pointed out, uh, there is a culture of learning from failures and springing back to success. So this is exactly demonstrated again. Uh, the Chandrayaan 2 was a sad story. It crashed uh, two kilometers away from the surface of the moon. But, and also the data available from that crash was minimal. But in spite of that, uh, the ISRO team has deciphered the entire mystery and they try to understand what can go wrong and where the strengthening is required. And they have evolved a capsule which is very modern and sophisticated. They use all their technical knowledge and know-how to make uh, the, the lander over over the, the lunar surface and look for a precise, uh, uh, safe landing uh, zone right. and bring it down gently on the surface. These operations are extremely complex, and several nations have failed in the past. So the resource uh, capability to learn and correct themselves and carry out the simulations on the ground is what has helped this uh, mission happen. Of course, there's an entire teamwork and a uh, lot of reviews have taken place, a lot of simulations have taken place, and the corrective actions taken are in the right, uh, the right direction as demonstrated in today's mission. Uh, I'm also joined at the moment uh, by uh, Dr. Kale joins me, uh, Pramod Kale, former director of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Sir, you want to give us uh, a sense of what this day means for you. I just want to, uh, our audiences to understand why today is such a remarkable day, historic day. I think it's a very, very important uh, event that has taken place and that has really built up the confidence that we have in our launch vehicles, in our spacecrafts. What I had been thinking was that uh, we demonstrated that using our PSLV launch vehicle, we could go all the way up to the moon. And buoyed by that particular success, the same launch vehicle mm -hmm. we used to go to the Mars also. Today, when the, the landing was actually taking place, I was thinking that in the future, using the same vehicle, similar kind of a mission, 
we should be able to go to the Mars also. And I think this is where our confidence has been built up that we can land on the surface of the moon, then we can land on the surface of the Mars also. So the are you saying Mars next? Are you saying Mars next? Is that what years. you see, Dr. Kale, that having achieved what we have so smoothly, you don't see any yes, hitch that, in landing that, on yes, Mars that next? Is, yes, that, yes. yes that, is what, that is what I see in the future coming up. Because we could use the same vehicle. I am quite confident that with the same vehicle, we should be able to go to the Mars also. Wow. Uh, Mike Massimino, former NASA astronaut, is joining me from New York. Uh, Mike, we had a Russian experiment that didn't work just a couple of days ago, a lunar mission. India successful. How, does the, how will the world see Indian space research today? It's always we've had cutting-edge scientists working at NASA. Now it's been done by ISRO here in India indigenously. How does the world see this moment, Mike? What does this mean, you think, for India? I, I think, thanks for having me. Uh, congratulations to everyone involved here for this great accomplishment, something that no other country or entity has been able to do before, get to the south, uh, south pole of the moon. Uh, so I think it's a great accomplishment for India, but I think it's a great accomplishment for the world as, as well. And it's one that the entire world can, be, uh, can take pride in. Because uh, I, I think what you're going to learn of being in that area looking for ice, seeing if that ice might be able to be converted into drinking water for future astronauts uh, who will explore there, uh, looking at ways to use the moon, particularly that area with the, with the water that might, hopefully is there that can be used for fuel to explore further into the cosmos, as your colleague was saying, possibly uh, going to Mars. So I think that there's a lot to look forward to, not only for India, and India uh, had this great accomplishment, but I think all of us will, uh, will be looking forward to what we're going to learn over the next couple of weeks with this mission and what we can learn to move forward with more missions in the future. So I think it's a great day for the whole world. Let me get in more voices. Dr. Annapurni Subramaniam is Director, Indian Institute of Astrophysics in Bengaluru. What, what does this day mean, ma'am? Give us something, what it means to the community of those working in space research in terms of achievement recognition? It is a really momentous occasion, a golden moment, a victorious moment uh, in, in terms of uh, achievement scientifically and technologically. For the scientific community, uh, as we know, science proceeds in leaps and bounces with the help of technology. So technological demonstration like this is extremely important for the furtherment of science. Mm -hmm. And of course, the soft landing is only the beginning. And then the, the lander and the rover will carry out science experiments. But this is also just the beginning of a smaller experiments. But with this capacity, mm -hmm. we will be able to carry out much more expansive and uh, interesting experiments in the future. 